Hello, everyone. Welcome to the RESO conference. I am Rebecca Jensen, and I am proud to be your uh, chair for this year, the, the chair of the board. And I just want to say thank you to everybody that made it out in person and also those that are online. Um, it's great to see so many smiling faces. And, you know, one of the my favorite things about the RESO conference is that um, we have such a great community here to share ideas and to learn from each other. And um, I've been involved in RESO for a long time, and um, it was actually a different conference. I think it was the CMLS conference that I attended the last time I was here for in Tucson for a conference. Um, I think it was about 10 years ago. And it was at a different resort, um, one that had this really long Indian name. I Forgive me, I don't remember what it was. But I do remember that going into that conference was quite uh, a remarkable experience, at least for me, because I had, um, right after being told we were going to Tucson, I'd blown out my knee um, in a skiing accident in Utah, and I was just uh, a few days off of a surgery on my knee when we came to this conference, and um, I was out trying to do, you know, my due diligence on my uh, like physical therapy and everything on a golf course at night. And if you've been out in Tucson at night, I mean, the skies are amazing, where they're just star-studded and a full moon. And so I'm by myself on the far end of a, I think, par four golf course when all of a sudden I hear these howls. Of, Ooh, right, and I hear one, and then I hear another one, and I'm just terrified. And so I start looking, what am I going to do? I actually ended up calling 911 as I'm limping towards the only tree that I can find. When, you know, I think I was using, ironically, Verizon at the time, the call drops. And <laughs> so I'm trying to like limp towards this tree when the 911 operator calls me back and says, hey, what's your emergency? And I'm like, can you hear it? And I just like place my phone out <laughs> and she's like, honey, you're not from around here, are you? <laughs> and I'm like, what do you mean? I'm like, I'm going to get eaten by a pack of wolves. And at the time, the only thing I could think was in my head, I had two young sons in elementary school that were going to be told that their mom was eaten by a pack of wolves. And <laughs> I'm like, actually, that might be kind of a cool way to go. I don't know. <laughs> if you're considering your mortality. So the 911 operator is like, hey, honey, you don't need those trees. Those are just coyotes. <laughs> and they're probably more afraid of you than you are of them. So, you know, here's what I'm he here to share. Uh, first off is don't worry about coyotes. Apparently, they're no big deal. <laughs> So I'm thinking, okay, um, I limped back to my hotel room and um, I had fun because the next morning the CMLS had me on stage saying, what keeps you up at night? And I swear I had so much adrenaline in my system, I didn't sleep at all, which so I apologize for a repeat of a story. But so I have a whole bunch of friends who are like, you're not going to climb any trees while you're in Tucson this time, right? <laughs> and I'm like, no, 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 I don't think that's necessary. But sure enough. Like two weeks ago, I'm trying to lose my COVID-19 pounds. I don't know if you joined me in that. <laughs> Mine was more like the COVID-20. I'm at the gym, and all of a sudden, like my gut bursts open like a scene from Aliens. I've got this hernia, and here I am again in stitches. So <laughs> I'm like, did I do something to the Tucson gods here to like upset them? <laughs> I don't know. But so I'm thinking, okay. I'm like in the conspiracy land, but then I start hearing about these other stories. Where's Kristen Carr? She's like, yeah, right there. She's like, my whole RPR team had weird medical things happen. And then somebody else told me there's like a ceremony outside that we need to do. So I'm going to totally check into that. I am <laughs> recommend like if you want to like join me and trying to, I don't know what, if do I need a sacrifice? What? <laughs> But um, so it's a different time coming to Tucson. Uh, if anyone is planning a conference next time, I might RSVP no to Tucson. But, <laughs> but honestly, it's a great resort. It looks great. Um, I hope that you all have stories that you're willing to share. 
Um, I'm hoping that, you know, as my abdomen expands over the course of the day that I don't need a 911 call because I kind of look like I'm pregnant by the end of the day. And I'm going to totally be throwing back tequila shots tonight. So I don't know about you. <laughs> but um, I'm just hoping that we can all have a place to gather and have fun and share learnings. And um, welcome to the RESO conference. And with that, uh, way more than enough about me. But I hope that um, you all enjoy your time here. And with that, it's my honor to introduce the CEO of RISO, uh, the man that will help you learn a whole lot about everything that's happening. Um, that's one Mr. Sam DeBoard. So please help me welcome Sam to the stage. That's Riso, right? A little bit informal, a little bit fun, a uh, little bit more zany. For the new folks who are here, welcome. Um, a lot of you have been doing this for a lot of years, and we'll kind of talk about our history a little bit. Um, but we do want the new folks to feel comfortable and welcome here. Um, and we're a pretty informal organization a lot of the time. So how could you have a chair give that personal of a story and not feel somewhat connected personally to this group. So thank you, Rebecca. We'll talk a little bit about your history with the organization as well as we get going. But we've been talking a lot lately about executing on our vision. Um, Amy Gorse from Presta Consulting, are you here? Hand up. I think you all know Amy. She's worked with us for a long time. Um, but you were with us last week in New York at Inman. Um, we talked a lot about execution, about the idea that um, what we do, what we've been working on for 20 years as an idea is really important, but executing and closing on that vision is kind of where we need to be as we move forward. Um, so 20 years ago, really in 1999, this idea, this work you all started at RISO um, started with Brett, but 20 years ago we became an official part of the National Association of Realtors. And we've been working there. And then a little over 10 years ago, uh, we became an independent organization. And it's kind of nice to go back to those roots and think about what um, these people, who many of you do this in your own time, with your own expertise, this is not your primary job, why they wanted to be a part of it. And we all remember Lori Janik when she signed those original papers. And I think that that focus Not anymore. <laughs> so, um, this was th the meaning of RISO, why we incorporated this organization, why you all have worked on this for many years. And while we have a more streamlined mission and vision now as an organization, I think this is a really great example of, of what we tried to do and what we are doing today as an organization. Um, there's a lot of words here, but obtaining maximum efficiencies for all parties participating in real estate transactions. And that's what really makes us a unique organization. We have uh, membership classes that our input from our different members is so broad that we have MLSs and their software providers who really carried the water for us for a long time. But that we have an increasing large influence from the brokerage community that we have brokerages vendors, brokerages technology companies, aggregators, um, we have assessment companies, we have appraisers who are involved in the organization. And we can bring that subject matter expertise to the rest of the industry in a way that is probably unique to, to RISO, to what our membership looks like. So, a little bit more of our history. Um, some of the folks who were involved when we were incorporated are still here today. Um, I think some of you are sitting in the crowd. Feel free to clap for yourself if you are. Steve, Kristen, Troy, a lot, lot of these folks who were here at our incorporation stage. Um, our chair, Rebecca Jensen, was here on the board of directors at the time that we incorporated this organization. Art, Rob, Paula, sorry if I didn't name everyone's name, but a lot of those people have spent 20 years 
doing this work for the organization. And this is where we are today, this broad set of membership that represents so many viewpoints. Thank you. This is you. And our board of directors. This is a large group of folks who are senior executives at the most important organizations in the industry. And they take their time to work for you, for our industry, to be a part of this. Not just their time, but their expertise, their intellect, their experience. So anyone who is with our board, would you please stand? And can we give them all a big hand? So key RESO staff members, we're here to obviously get the work done of RESO, but we want you to have a good time while you're here too. So know who these people are. Suzanne Biggins on. We need you to raise your hand. Does everybody know Suzanne? <laughs> Suzanne will not take credit for these events, but I just show up and Suzanne points me in the right direction. She's responsible for these beautiful venues and these beautiful events. So um, please do reach out to us if we can help you in any way, give you a, a improve your experience while you're here at the event. So we've been the last few years in this marketplace of everything up and to the right. Um, home prices, the rate of sales, income, venture capital investment. This has been three, five, eight years of what we've been experiencing in the industry. And sometimes the, the venture capital investment UHF. If, if we don't have UHF fans at Riso, I don't know if we have them anywhere. It's felt like a little bit of a fire hose that the money coming into the industry, the M&A activity, the investment is directed at the problems we're trying to solve, but so much of it doesn't even seem to be solving those issues. There's so much motion and so much action, but not all of it is making it to the things we're trying to solve. And I think we all are questioning right now how long the music's going to play. How long is this party going to last? At what point will the venture capitalists take the needle off the record? At what point will the federal agencies make money less available? And will we have executed on what we needed to do? At this maybe unique time, at least in my career, for the real estate industry, where we've had so much opportunity through venture capital to solve the problems we have for the real estate transaction, will we have done that? Or will we have just moved a lot of money around and moved a lot of people around? And that's really what we're going to talk about um, this week at this event, that it's time to execute, to make sure we've done the things that we said we're going to do. And when we were in Kiowa about six months ago, I was a little bit worried, not about the general organization, because we're doing so well with data dictionary, with web API, with certification, those kind of core things that are most important to us. But some of the other standards we've worked on for many, many years, were we executing on those? And I wasn't sure that we were, um, but in the last six months, the MLS community in particular has come out of the woodwork with implementations of technology that fulfill that dream that we've had of making the process better for our customers. And so you're gonna see that this week, not just ideas, not just specifications and rules, but implementations of technology, mostly by MLS organizations, on the rental side, on unique identifiers, people, properties, organizations, multilingual implementations, cross-border implementations, native inputs and outputs that are compliant with standards, data shares, showings. I'm really excited for those sessions this week. So we know you also come here to get business done. We're here to do the work of RESO. It's important work but you come here to meet new customers, meet new partners. We've got a networking lounge um, sponsored by our friends at Rental Beast. Thank you to all of our sponsors who are involved in making this event great. And we thought when we worked with our creative team that we could take this theme of execution to the networking lounge, to the whole conference, to everything we're doing here. Um, and as we worked with the creatives, um, we thought, you know, let's just take it, let's see how it flows. It got kind of weird really fast. Um, Rental Beast, thank you for being a good sport about this, but we're gonna stick with execution during the sessions. I've been doing this for three years, guys. If you thought the jokes were gonna be good, you were kidding yourself. <laughs> They're going to be bad and there are going to be more, so be ready for it. 
So if you've been with us um, earlier this year, we've been talking about kind of the stages that RISO's going through. That our 1.0 was certification, our 2.0 was really utilization, and then 3.0 is insights. And as we're thinking about that this week, we needed to show the industry that we could have a standard and a certification. That was a critical step that you all were involved in making happen. And 2.0 is these major improvements that you're going to hear a lot about this week. Um, it's no coincidence that Data Dictionary 2.0 is our current spec that we'll be certifying again going forward. That Web API Core 2.0 is what we've been certifying. That what some in the software community might call major breaking changes, we like to call major improvements on the marketing side, um, are, are the critical things that we've needed to do. So you're going to hear a lot about that in the reporting about certification, that it's not a black and white, now it's how deep and how broad do those certifications go. And what we want to talk about this week are actionable insights. What do we get from this data? Now that we have this data across the entire industry, from your organizations, from the work you've done, what can we tell our member organizations to help them make data-driven decisions going forward? And there's been a lot of discussion with our board of directors, with our executive committee, about why we do what we do. And it's the data consumer is the North Star. That we all do this work to make the experience, at the end of the day, what was in that early incorporation, the data standards and processes that create efficiencies for our data consumers to have that technology experience they're looking for. And you see a, a big voice from these data consumers, whether, again, brokers or whether brokers technology companies are involved in that conversation. So where are we right now? Data Dictionary 1.7, 90% of MLSs have passed. Um, a reminder that for the newer folks, we used to test metadata, the advertisement of what's on a system. Today we test all the way down into the payload records. Does a listing record actually comply with standards? Thousands of records per MLS system. Uh, Web API. This is actually slightly outdated just in the past week. Um, the top 16 MLSs moving their customers over to Web API cover about 25% of the subscribers in the industry. About 18 months ago, we were probably about 3% of the industry truly converted to Web API. Um, for the new folks, again, every realtor MLS has a Web API service. Almost every independent MLS also has a Web API service. But converting them, the customers, from RETs to Web API is the work. And these organizations that are doing that work should be proud. You should take a picture. You should send it back to your organization. We just added Mybor and Maris this week, who've moved almost all their customers from RETs to Web API. This is the work to be done, and what the MLS community has done in the last 18 months is pretty phenomenal in that progress. And we have. Yeah, thank you. Thank you all. If you look at these organizations, you've got MLSs over 50,000, but you've got MLSs at 1,000 subscribers. So organizations, big and small, are doing this work when they understand the value of it. Uh, the Working with Real Estate Data Course. This came from you at our pain point sessions, at our broker advisory work group. Um, if you haven't been to one of these events before, the pain point sessions on Thursday, they're messy, they're spicy, it's maybe the best part of the conference because we get the real problems that you're having in the industry and that's what we work on in the next year. That's what becomes part of our strat plan. Um, that course that we just released last year has 400 graduates, about 15 companies are making that their standard for training new employees, onboarding employees. Um, big success and that was, that was our member organization's idea that we need to build this common tech education for the industry. Uh, you'll hear more about our unique identifier standards, which you've seen, the UPI, which is um, we've known for quite a while, but we'll have an MLS implementation of that, unique organization identifier, the unique licensee identifier, which is a newer concept. We have 13 MLSs across the country working on a proof of concept so they can unify and deduplicate data about licensees, roster data in association management systems, MLS systems, brokerage systems. So, this transparency around MLS data is going to create some change, and that sometimes comes with discomfort. But we've had this stated goal 
as an organization, through you as our work group members, of going through that stage to make things better for our data consumers and bring this transparency to certified data across organizations. There's very little that makes me happier than to say the RESO Analytics certification reporting platform is live. You are going to hear from our CTO, Josh Darnell, a lot about that this week. Um, it has been released to all of the MLS software providers. They have your MLS reports that they review, and then they send them on to the MLS organizations to review themselves, to accept, and then be published. Um, again, sorry for those of you who've been through a few of these, but for the new folks, what this means is each organization's testing now will come with reports that are gonna be available publicly. And it'll show the resources, the fields, the lookups available in MLS systems, objectively, transparently giving that information to the industry for data consumers to be able to prepare for technology development. Local fields, RISO standard fields, IDX fields, and this is something we need your continued help with to figure out what kind of statistics will help you make better decisions as organizations. You can manipulate this data to see how deeply it exists in different systems. Um, each you know, set of property records is a field used a lot, is a resource used a lot. And importantly, that these are not judgments. These are not grades. This is just information. We need to figure out what's best for data consumers going forward, that sometimes we don't advertise in our systems very well what's actually available in the systems. But sometimes those things are not a good or bad, they're just information about different systems. So that's another one of these things we wanna talk about this week, is what kind of information do you need from this data set that we have now to help your organization? Um, server performance. Organizations are opting in to show how well their servers work, and we've talked about this a little bit, but we've had organizations go 10 times faster, 100 times faster in taking a data payload from an MLS to a broker organization just by being able to review this information that we have now on performance and testing. So that's our theme, really, for this week. Execution, but then what's next? Closing on what we've built, but what kind of information do you need to better the experience of the RESO member. Now, if you've been with us for the last few years, we've had some remote conferences, we needed to add some sizzle, we've had some celebrity cameos, Snoop Dogg, Ice-T, Paula Abdul, Alice Cooper, Sugar Ray Leonard, but we thought in talking about our 20-year history that we go a little old school again, because we have artists within our midst here, our RESO members. Again, I told you the jokes are gonna be bad, so be ready for it. So we have one of our members who would like to come up for a creative interpretive reading of an original piece of work for you as we open the morning. Amy, would you mind joining me on stage? Hey everyone, <laughs> uh, I'm Amy Gianos. Uh, I'm with Domus Analytics. For those of you who don't know us, we're a statistics vendor and we are currently onboarding new clients only on API and converting our existing clients from RETS to API. So in honor of that journey, I wrote a poem. For those of you who are parents, uh, you might recognize this. So with special thanks to Margaret Wise Brown, I bring you Good night, rats. In the great green room, there was an old RET server and an MLS director on Zoom and a mapping document of RETS to RISO to API. Boom. And there were three engineers sitting on chairs and a RETS connected license, but the data was not in compliance. Yet another metadata change for zip code, I know, strange. And three scheduled tasks of last status success. And a tired old Sam yelling, API is best. Good night, Rats. Good night, property classes. 
Hello, deprecation threats going out to the masses. Good night, metadata cache. Good night, long and short field name choices. Good night, non-standard data. The data dictionary group rejoices. Good night, results folder. Good night, fields to download. Good night, TXT output. Good night, DMQL code. Good night, offset to overcome server limits. I'm done with you. Now it's time for my vodka gimlets. Good night, last century's tech. You worked fine, but the 90s are behind us, and web API is divine. Good night, stars. Good night, air. Good night, dinosaur tech everywhere. <laughs>